Hello everyone, thank you for watching. I'm a producer and a certified Bitwig trader. Today, I'll show you something about mastering. I've mastered a bunch of tracks in these years, and I use it to do my work with famous plugins like Brainworks, UAD, Waves, but recently, I've spent a lot of time creating a chain entirely with Bitwig, with the same result in terms of sound and loudness. So, what are we gonna look at today is this mastering chain. Come on, let's get it started. And this is a, my typical mastering session. I always have a reference track and I send this signal on studio or speakers. Basically, it's a compare and it helps me to reach the loudness and the sound of a specific genre or a niche. And with this button, I chose to listen a mastered signal or unmastered. We have first of all a gain tool and after that the C offset remove and a smile, typical smile EQ in mastering. Now um, I have splitted my signal in five different bands. Um, it's, yeah, but it's a common approach in mastering having different bands. It's not my invention. Yeah, so this one from 0 to 200 hertz. I've got a saturator and usually i use this one quiet uh, threshold and ratio uh, because i really love upward compression as you can see with upward compression only the quiet part of the signal is affected so when you are using this part of saturator you are doing upward compression and when you are using this part this blue part uh, you are using uh, downward compression. In fact, take a look at this. Only the loudest part of the signal is affected. Using upward compression, you are able to increase the loudness of the quiet part of the signal underneath the threshold and leaving the loudest part of the signal unaffected. That's why, from my point of view, it's better upward compression instead of downward compression just to avoid to lose energy from your transient like kick, clap, snare and so on. Well, after that, I've got the gain, a stereo width and the clip, a final clip stage. The second band from 200Hz to 500Hz and the third band from 500 hertz to 1000 hertz the fourth band from 1000 hertz to 8000 hertz and the last the fifth band everything over 8 kilohertz in each band, I have got a spectrum analyzer to see the difference from the original signal. In red, have got the original signal and in white, the affected signal. have got a transient control in front of each band and have different pages, transient page to increase transient for each band and stereo image page to increase stereo width for each band and balance page to increase volume post process for each band <laughs> yeah now there is another eq but actually i'm not using this now yeah there is a mid side section because sometimes i need to equalize differently the mid and side part and the final saturator uh, with upward compression again and the peak limiter at the end and uh, now the analysis tool uh, one of the most important things in mastering is PSR value and you can find something free online or you can recreate this patch I think a magic number could be 8 or 7 because it gives you energy but also preserve a good dynamic range. 
Now I'll take a track I've mastered um, with many third part plugins and I'll try to recreate the same sound, the same loudness with this chain. Of course, I put the master track into reference track and now I find the original track and I put in the first channel. Now I'll show you the difference. Yeah, this song is by Groovenerd and FDF, a DJ duo. Actually, they are always in chat on track source. I don't know if this song is now in chat. Uh, anyway, I mastered this uh, song in April. Um, I think it was released last May. And yeah, let's carry on. So first of all, I'll push up the volume to reach the greatest loudness. Once we have done this, it's a matter of sound based. This is the fifth band over 8 kilohertz and I'm increasing a little bit of high part of the spectrum also fourth band now it's time to upward compression in the first band So let's check the right threshold and ratio of the quiet part of the signal. The white one is the affected signal and the red one is the original signal which comes through the first band. Now let's move on to the stereo image page and what I always do is to increase uh, the stereo width of the fifth band and the fourth band. Now transient control, a little bump in the lowest and highest part of the spectrum. Now let's compare. I think we are getting closer but there is a slight difference in the high part of the spectrum. So I'm gonna do upward compression and saturation in the fifth band. Yeah, basically I'll do the same in the fourth band. Let's compare again. So very, very closer. Now a little bit of creeping. Let's check the side and mid part and I'm gonna put something in the side part. Now the final saturation, upward compression, limiting, final limiting and now I'll show you the difference between the new master version and the old mastered version and as you can see 
they are very very similar the blue one is the new version and the orange one is the old version so wow the final part analysis tool as i told you make sure you are near 8 psr because it works well